I want to talk about the coding system for a second. So I don't have a script for this. Uh, I feel like almost like writing a script would be pointless at this point. It would take too long to make, and ultimately people have started making very good points. Like, nothing I say can really add anything to the discussion. I just want to have a dialogue with my own community about it. So, uh, there will be a new coding system in Halo Infinite, for those of you who don't know. The way that codings are going to work is that instead of choosing your primary and secondary colors, uh, 343 will develop these set-in-stone coatings that you can put on your armor, you can put it on your weapons, you can put it on your vehicles, even. That's cool. They can choose to develop new textures and stuff. So if you want your Spartan to have kind of a plasticky texture, you can do that. If you want your Spartan to look like they're caked in mud or that their armor has been through hell, you can also do that as well. Uh, this coding system opens up a lot of uh, 343 described it as opportunities for changing the look of Spartans, but it came at the cost of a modular color customization system, something that's been a part of Halo for many, many years. Think of it kind of like a Destiny's shader system. As an example, this is one of my favorite shaders in Destiny, but it will always be this color. I can't have this shader with blue or purple or pink or whatever. It will always be this specific color. It can't be anything else. That's essentially what Halo's doing now. When you get a coating, it's going to come with the color baked into the textures and everything. And uh, people are upset. Now, there are people that I think are going a little bit too far. I've seen the old hashtag gamer behavior. You know, I've seen death threats. I've seen unreasonable outrage considering that it is a video game. But for those of you who are genuinely upset about this and voicing this on social media, I empathize with you all a lot and I largely agree with the criticisms. Another problem with this is even a UI concern, because we've been through it. So with Halo 5, when they locked down the armor customization to pre-built 343 developed armor sets that we couldn't modify at all, um, it got to the point where there were hundreds of armors in Halo 5, and you had to scroll through a very clunky list to find that one armor that you liked. And are we going to see that now for colors? 343 is going to have to develop dozens of possible combinations for all the different people, and then they're going to have to develop different textures and stuff. And then with DLC, we're going to get new coats, new colors, new texture. Is Halo Infinite going to have hundreds of coatings that we're going to have to scroll through until we find that just one that we liked because it was the color we always ran with through the years? After Halo 5, I don't have faith that a UI could be developed to support a system like that. Uh, Greenskull pointed that out in his video, and that's something I had never considered. That's a concern already. Are we going to get a repeat of the Halo 5 UI problem, where it's just cluttered with all of these developer-made things because they removed our ability to create the stuff ourselves? What I think is a little bit frustrating about the armor coding system is that it is cool, but it's a system that other games have already done, and they've done it in a more uh, modular way than what 343 is pitching to us. Uh, everybody constantly refers back to Doom 2016's multiplayer. It had independent sliders for colors, as well as grime and material on the armor. What's sad is what 343 is creating is really cool for Halo. It's not just colors anymore, it's down to the textures of the armor that we can change. This is actually a really cool innovation for Halo, but what makes it not okay is that it came at a cost, you know? And unfortunately, this has been a thing that Halo has struggled with for a decade now, with 343. I think of Spartan Ops in Halo 4. We've got this new thing, it's called Spartan Ops. It'll be updated with new missions to play and stuff, but we're removing Firefight. If Spartan Ops came alongside Firefight, I think people would have been more open to it. For Halo 5, we're getting even more skins for our different weapons. We're also getting customizable assassination animations. We're gonna be able to like choose player stances from the main menu. But, but, 
We're removing the ability to customize your emblems. We're also stripping back armor customization, and so on and so forth. And now with Halo Infinite, look, we've got these cool new weapons, this bulldog and this sidekick pistol. But we're removing the classic shotgun and the classic magnum from the game. These are now your new weapons. And now here we are. We've developed this really cool coding system. It's really innovative. It's gonna let you, for the first time in the franchise's history, choose what kind of texture you want on your armor. But, but, we're removing the ability to modify your primary and secondary colors. You now need to be okay with what we decide the color is for these textures. It's frustrating because a lot of what 343 does is cool in concept, but the reason that it's usually rejected by the community is it comes at a cost. It comes at the cost of things that we actually do really like. And now, the problem with armor customization uh, colors specifically is that they're very specific to all of us. We've all had those stories of maybe we were inspired by Kirby, and that's why we ran pink and red as the primary colors. Um, I think of somebody like Ubernick, who sports his to him, iconic orange armor. Whenever I think of, like, an orange uh, color scheme for Spartan, I always think of Ubernick. In Halo Infinite, though, Ubernick is gonna have to find a 343 developed orange coating, and he will have to use that. And other players can use it as well. Like, the act of creating a color scheme for your Spartan, there's no more individuality to it anymore. If he chooses to use the official Halloween pumpkin coating because it's orange, uh, that's no longer Ubernick's orange color that he chose for himself. He's running the pumpkin coating, and so is thousands of other players. You know, the individuality is gone. Uh, the stories of how we came to the colors that we picked, it's, it's gone now. Uh, there is no variety. There's no options. Sure, there's a lot of options, but it's, it's options in the same way. Suppose I took away your bin of Legos that you've been playing with for 16 years now, and I said, I've got a better idea for you, and I provide with, to you 50 Lego sets that I made myself and glued in the pieces so you could no longer mess with them anymore. And I said, look at all these options. Look at the variety to choose from. Look, 50 pre-made Lego sets. You can't fiddle with them, but there's 50 of them. Look at the variety. Nothing beats just a bin of Legos. Let me build it myself. Let me create a story of how I assembled this Lego creation myself. Now, the color customization system from previous Halos wasn't as in-depth as an entire bin of Legos. It was just your primary and your secondary color. But, uh, did that mean it needed to go just because it was simplistic? Did that mean, well, it's simplistic, so it should go? No, I'd actually argue that's room for expansion. That's room for growth, room for further pushing it, further allowing players to individually color their Spartans. Halo is prime for a straight-up color wheel. Uh, and instead, we just saw it completely gutted. Uh, seeing as 343 is stripping back color customization, I'm now even more worried that we're not going to see emblem customization return. We're going to stick with what Halo 5 did, which is... 343 developed emblems for us with no way to mix and match them uh, and it's just disappointing you know 343 doesn't have bad ideas some of their interesting ideas unfortunately come at the cost of good ideas that were in halo for a very long time and i feel that if 343 stopped removing features that the community liked such as firefight such as campaign theater mode uh, we'd see more positive, warm receptions to some of their new and innovative ideas. Now, something to consider is that developers don't deliberately set out to remove a thing. Like, when 343 was developing Halo Infinite, it didn't just already have the primary and secondary color customization system, and they decided, we're gonna remove it to be me. That's not how that works. These tools have to be developed alongside the game, and sometimes when you're kind of in that developer bubble, you don't 
consider some things that the community does take for granted, such as primary and secondary color customization. It, the same with Firefight. Firefight wasn't ready to go with Halo 4. Uh, they didn't consciously remove it from the game and replace it. No, from the ground up, they built Spartan Ops without considering that people had an attachment to the Firefight game mode. The developers aren't removing things. They're just kind of in their own tunnel vision and forgetting to actually build some of these things as they set out to make these new games. So whenever you hear me say that something was removed, know in the back of my head that I understand it wasn't taken out of the game as in it existed before. What I'm saying is that from a public perspective, this does come across as a conscious removal of something, when in reality, it's just that they had never considered that maybe it should be included in the first place and then build it. When discussing the coding system, I encourage you all to acknowledge the strengths of it, because there are strengths. We can't throw it in the trash. There are good ideas there that I want 343 to expand on. The problem is we need to figure out how to slot back in uh, what was removed. Now, as far as primary and secondary colors go, I wonder like how hard that would be to reintroduce to the series. It all depends on at a code level how this coding system works. Um, a solution for it, I don't know how viable it is. I don't even know if maybe if it can't make it for the launch. Uh, I'd be okay with it being a post-launch thing, but it needs to be there. If we can't edit our primary and secondary colors, I want the ability to customize the different parts of the armor. I want to be able to make the chest piece plastic purple and my legs rusty red. You know, I want to be able to attach coatings to individual bits of the armor, not just the full armor set, if that makes any sense. Believe it or not, I'm actually somebody optimistic about Halo Infinite. I've got my reservations, I've got my concerns and stuff. I'm definitely not overhyping myself for the game. I am expecting that there will be areas I like, but what I've seen so far, I'm actually kind of interested in. Uh, the gameplay is a lot less crazy, like Halo 5's gameplay, uh, which means that player movement will be a little bit more predictable than Halo 5, which means uh, there's more opportunities for the sandbox itself to be the star of the game. That has me interested. Some of the quotes about the way the AIs will interact with the player in the environment, such as AIs throwing grunts at the player, AIs being able to move around the sandbox, and even swap their own weapons. Like, it's interesting stuff. It's kind of what I like out of a Halo game. But I'd say this is the first one, the first announcement where I'm just like, man, I'm sure that the armor customization will be really cool. They've said that it's about on par with Reach, if not maybe better. Um, I remember that quote from Sketch. But as of right now, um, the game has less customization options than Reach because they stripped out something that we really liked. And it's it's a bummer, because what they are introducing to Halo is really cool, theoretically. But it came at the cost of something really cool. So, I'm going to hand off uh, the discussion to you guys. I want you guys to discuss this in the comments section. I want to hear some possible solutions and stuff, and just how you're thinking about this. It can be both positive and negative. There are some people that don't really have an emotional attachment to the colors that their Spartan chooses, so they are kind of unfazed by this news. Uh, and if you are unfazed, then let me know down below if you empathize with some of the people who are shaken up a little bit by this news. Just discussions. Discussions are good. Uh, and with that being said, I will see you guys on the next video, and... Uh, Here's to hoping that there's better times ahead.